Hi everyone, welcome back to another video on Ed the SPI and it's the first video I'm going to start trying to diagnose what's wrong with Ed's ignition system and why he's running badly. First step I done off camera yesterday was I got the new MEMS diagnostic hooked up, looked at some of the figures and the most notable one was the coolant temperature sensor. It was not going up in line with the rest of the coolant system and that's just by sort of touch so I'd feel, I'd let it run 20 minutes <clears throat> I would feel the radiator end, carefully obviously the holes, I'd follow the holes back and I noticed that the temperature only got to about 30 degrees now it should be getting well past 90 degrees so I thought is it a problem with the temperature sensor or the wiring I thought I'll check the cooling system first, so I felt a bit of the cooling system and I'll show you this in the engine in a minute and I felt where the pipes got hot and then some of the pipes got cold and one of the particular pipes that branches off to a Y shape, which again I'll show you one section was hot and the one that leads to the coolant sensor was stone cold so there's either a problem in the cooling system the pipes, eh, the hoses even or there's an air lock. So the first thing I'm going to look at is getting into that hose and getting it replaced. So let's go to the engine and have a look what I found. So the two most notable things that I've done in here so far, the air box is off just to get room and the new coils in. The pipes here that I was telling you about, the radiator got hot, this got hot, through the thermostat and the other side got hot. And this pipe here, which I'll show you the replacement for because it's easier to see. So the pipe that comes out the other side here, I replaced about a year and a half ago, but to be honest, they were silicon pipes and I wasn't best pleased with some of the fits. So some of them I replaced, the ones I was happy with I kept. Could that be one of the problems? Possibly, we'll soon find out. But this is the Y piece pipe that comes out here. This sits, this end comes from the thermostat. This end goes to a join that then goes into the heater. This end is the one that goes to the coolant sensor. So when I felt this the other day when the engine was up to temperature, this part was hot, this part was hot, this part was cold. So when I get the old uh, hose off, I can compare the shape with this as it's a, an original part, and I can check this join here to see if there's some kind of blockage. That's the plan. But to get into here, this um, engine steady bolt has to come off. Right. I've not drained any of the coolant system because I'm working at the top end of the engine just now. And if I get spillage, I'll just clean it up. Let's have a look at this thermostat. So, visually, it looks okay. Are we clean? A new one of these, but let's go and test this, see if it's actually working, then we can hopefully eliminate that as one of the culprits. 
I'm going to compare both thermostats to see how each of them compare and if there are any faults. The starting position for them both is closed. There we go. And we can see straight away already the new one fully open, the old one fully closed. So the old one has had a fault. Which is good that I found a fault because now I know it definitely needed replaced. Right, the sandwich plate is obviously attached to the bracket, you probably won't see that for this here. Bracket on the radiator and this obviously needs to come off for this hose or to make it easier at least. So I'm going to take off these bolts here. And cleaned up but looking through it there's no blockages at all which is good right let's get this hose off I'm going to try the coolant one first theory being that yeah, this one will hold it in place better and I'm hoping the screw is going to undo it fairly easy It is. It's getting it back on that's the problem. Let's compare the shape of the two hoses first. So the one that was on, the one that I replaced about a year and a half ago. And the new one. And you can see I had to slightly modify this from what it was original because it just wasn't wasn't good. But you can see the angles are different. This angle here is straight, cuts off here with a bigger join here, whereas here there's none of this extra bit in the middle. And this obviously branches off here. It takes a lot more branches. Right. A little test on the hose. This is the thermostat end, heater valve, and the one to the coolant temperature sensor. Like I explained at the start of the video, this was warm to touch, that was warm to touch, this was cold, which would explain why, if the sensor's working, it was only reading basically engine temperature. So I'm going to pour the water in here and see how it comes out here and here to find out if it's blocked initially. I could do other tests, but let's go. See the difference in flow rate plus all the gunk that came out of here. It's obviously partially blocked, but it could be to do with the shape of this as well. Because when I bought these, they were cheap, and that's my fault for buying cheap. I should have bought the more expensive ones. So I've opted to go back with rubber just to get this engine back to running how it should be. Thought I would best I can have a look at the inside of the inlet manifold that goes to the coolant sensor and I managed to get in just with a screwdriver to check if it was basically obstructed or not because this was all cleaned out when I replaced all the sensors not too long ago and when I push the screwdriver in it's spongy it feels like it's blocked with something when I take it out yeah it's pretty nasty in there so as much as I didn't want to, I'm now going to have to take the injection system off as I have done before. I've shown that in previous videos so I'm not going to show that procedure but I'm going to get it all off and I'm going to have a look properly into why this is blocked in here. And it's certainly starting to answer some questions of why the car's not running properly. Right, back to the injection system off again and I'm going to check all around this best I can. The coolant temperature sensor out here I'm picking bits of gunk out of it 
basically the waterway in here needs to be a bit clearer so I'm just going to get in best I can give it a good clean out and then I'm going to pour some water through and see how clear the pasture is and I'll come back to you when I'm at that stage Right, it had some stuff in it but not as much as what I thought it would obviously if this is not getting any hot um, coolant going through it it's gunking up fairly easily because the new fresh coolant isn't doing its job and clearing all the crap from it so what I've done is I've been putting some gunk through it if you watch here you'll see it's unblocked now because this fills up so what I'm going to do just give it a few rinses through clean it as best I can get the temperature sensor back on and have a look at some of the other components just to make sure they're all fine but one bit at a time and obviously I'll clean up some of these things as well I'm going to have a look at the PTC heater get this circlip off and get this bit off to see if I can hear any rattling from there so a few rinses and I've basically poured the water through till it runs clear just like this clear. Right, the PTC heater at the bottom is now out, basically that sits there. And is secured by a circlip. So I was wary of this because obviously the, there's a bit of movement in the terminal and a telltale sign that this um, has had it, I've been told, is this. So that is goosed. Now these to buy, as I mentioned previously on the injection system, are very expensive, about £100. And basically what it is, it's a little heater that heats up the inside of the manifold when the engine's cold and um, makes it better in <coughs> cold conditions. I've got another manifold there, so I'm going to take the PTC heater out of that and see if that's going to be any better before I have to fork out for a new one. So this is frustrating, this is the one that came off Ed, and this is the replacement one. So they're both knackered, so I'm going to have to put a parts order in and get a new one, which I suppose on a plus side gives me time to get through the rest of this, get it all cleaned and spotless for going back on, but yeah it's annoying because that's obviously an expensive part for what it is and there obviously are to flow with them. So I'm going to call that one a day there, I need to order some parts, <clears throat> wait on them coming and then I want to take my time getting it back together. I want to be able to enjoy them but I don't want to have to go back in and do these jobs again so they're getting done properly. So parts order, wait and I'll see you when they're here. But thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers! <laughs>